let's look at the Micro 800 PLC. And that's the hardware of that PLC line from Allen Bradley. This is a picture of the Micro 820 PLCs that we will use in the lab. And it's a good representation of the pieces that you would use uh, in a Micro 820 application. To the far left is our power supply that is basically taking in 120 volt AC power from the wall outlet and converting that to 24 volt DC, which is what the, the Micro 820 uh, PLC requires, 24 volt DC to power it. As you can see, the Micro 820 PLC is what we call it is a micro PLC, so it's small. It, di it didn't rail mounts. Um, there are a, a fixed amount of embedded I.O. points, meaning that there are so many inputs and so many outputs that are embedded in the controller, and that's what's available in these green terminal strips that are on the top and bottom. And then we have two places here for plugins to expand our I.O. Uh, capability. The other thing of note is the kind of the, the front of the PLC itself, the, uh, the display panel, shall we say, that has some various indicating LEDs and uh, LEDs that'll light up based on if one of the inputs are turned on or if one of the outputs are turned on. The other thing to note is the, uh, the logo, just to see that it is a Allen Bradley product. It does provide us the model, which is the A20. And it actually gives us the full catalog number of this particular model. There are quite a few options when you select the Micro H20 PLC based on um, a few a few variations. Uh, but this particular model is the 2080-LC20-20QWB. The, uh, the numbers here in the middle, LC20, just indicate that this is the H20 family. The other thing of note on the label is actually the MAC address. So this yellow cord coming in on the bottom is actually an, an ethernet cord. Plug it into the RJ45 port that is it's sitting here kind of underneath. Uh, so the product has the label for the MAC address. Every device, every ethernet device has a unique MAC address. This is different from the IP address that we will later set in the controller. But for a quick reference, the MAC address is given um, right here on the label for us to reference. The various wires going uh, from the from the power supply to this terminal block on the side, and then in turn to the to the controller is simply the 24 volt DC. So the red wire is the positive 24 volt. The black wire is the negative 24 volt. So we'll bring out a um, a positive and minus. 24 volt DC to kind of make the complete circuit. Power goes out of the power supply, through the terminal block, and into the PLC. Here's another look at the Micro H20 with the plug-in module covers removed. So we take the two covers off, and we can see there's just basically a socket here that when we place our, uh, our actual plug-in, that would actually be in another input or output card, will interface to the, to the controller through these sockets. So the H20 allows for two plugins. If you're not using the plugin, then the cover that we saw in the previous picture would just remain on here and keep these sockets covered to keep the dust out. I should note that uh, the, the displays, the LEDs that we didn't discuss back here are just some indicating LEDs that will give you the status of the Micro 820 PLC itself. So the lights, the chart right over here refers to the lights over here. So on the left-hand side, we have run, force, and ethernet. And then on the right-hand side, we have fault, communications, or com, and SD for secure digital, because there is a secure digital slot in this PLC as well. So the green light being on indicates that this PLC is in the run mode and that we have an ethernet connection. If we had a forced IO point, we would have a light here letting us know that something's been forced on or forced off. If we had a fault, we would have a light here. Any kind of communications that were occurring, we would probably see this light flickering. And then if there was any kind of secure digital communication going on, we would have that light here flickering too, most likely. 
So the next piece of the PLC is just understanding the wiring and uh, where, you know, where we would bring our inputs and our outputs. So this is kind of looking at the top of the PLC. So we have a green row of terminals here, and this is a removable terminal block, meaning that we can actually take this green strip completely off of the base unit and put it back on. And the top row of the PLC is our inputs. It just so happens that all of our inputs are on the top row. So we have the ability to bring in discrete inputs as well as four analog inputs in this micro H20 unit. So a discrete input being simply an on off type input. It's either on or it's off. It's either a zero or a one or an analog input, which would have an actual value to it. In this case, the micro H20 will bring in a voltage signal, which would be a zero to 10 volt signal. So that it would receive a signal between zero and 10 volts. And then inside the PLC, it would in turn scale that voltage value to, to become um, an actual, shall we say, engineering unit that you could use in the program. And we'll discuss that as we go into the analog section. The other green terminal block here uh, is kind of unique to the micro H20. And this is a communications, serial communications port. So we have D plus, D minus, G, and an RX, a TX, and a G. So the micro H20 is capable of RS-485 communication as well as RS-232 uh, uh, communication. So for 485 communication, we'll use the D plus, the D minus, and the G for ground. And for 232 communication, we'll use the RX and the TX and the G. RX for receive, TX for transmit. So when we do configure our micro 20, if we were going to use this serial port for some sort of communications, we need to verify and specify that it is set to either 45 or 232. And then we need to wire to the appropriate port based on the selection we use. And then in turn, looking at the bottom of the PLC, we see another row of green terminals. And this row of terminals is for the discrete outputs and the one analog output. It also has the two, two terminals here that will be for the power. So we have to bring 24 volt DC power to the PLC in order to energize it and make it actually run. The rest of these terminals are all dedicated to the outputs from the PLC. So this V0-0, or I should say VO-0, they're very, the O's and the zeros look very similar to each other, of course. So this is VO for voltage out dash zero for zero referring to the first output. We, we, uh, we reference from zero as our first output. So this is our voltage output. And then over here we have just an O zero zero, O zero one, O zero two, O zero three, etc. These are our discrete outputs. So O for output zero for the first one for the second two for the third output, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh output. So the micro H20 that we'll have in the lab, it will be pre-wired and you'll be able to take it and just uh, plug in an ethernet cord to it and be able to connect to it and, and program it and uh, download to it and, and test it out. Uh, but just to get familiar with, with the pieces of the micro PLC, it's quite simple. Um, micro PLC pretty much has everything built into it, and it does have the ability to add a few expansion I.O. cards. Whereas we look at our larger PLC platforms, such as the control objects that we also have in our lab, those are going to be more of a, we have to kind of specify and build up the rack. So it doesn't come kind of pre you know, pre-built like the micros do, you have to specify, I want this type of CPU. I want these IO cards and you need these communication cards. And then you will put them, insert them in the chassis. So you have to buy all the pieces loose, shall we say, and then kind of put them together. Uh, the advantage of the, of that is of course, you have a lot of flexibility 
in choosing uh, what you need for your application. Whereas in these micro PLCs, you don't have that much flexibility in what you can do. You have what's built into the base unit and you have whatever expansion IO capabilities that are available to you. So that's it. That kind of concludes our introduction to the hardware. Um, in our next video, we'll start to look at more about the wiring of the inputs and the outputs that would happen on those green terminal strips.